Hey, it's Cameron McKenzie here. I'm the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com. And I don't know how many views this is going to get. I wanted to talk a little bit about the Hibernate 5 schema export class. And one of the reasons why I want to talk about it is it's changed significantly since version 3.5. And I wrote a book a little while for 3.5. So if anybody does examples in 3.5, the schema export class doesn't work. So I don't know if anybody's got that old copy hanging around. But if anybody was, I wanted to show you just uh, how to make things work. So there's the code there from the old book and pasted that into Eclipse and created a class called Bad Scheme Export. You can get this up on my GitHub account if you really want it. But this is the old code here. If I uncomment this, click Save, you can try and do an import, Control Shift O. You see, it doesn't compile. What's it, what's it kicking out? Uh, can't instantiate. So the annotations configuration object doesn't exist anymore. And the scheme export does exist. Uh, you can see it's actually imported successfully here, but this doesn't compile. The, that method doesn't exist anymore. Uh, notice it imported annotation configuration from faster XML. That's not the one that I want. Anyways, I don't like errors in my workspace, so I'm just going to comment this back out and click save. And as I said, if you want to check that out on GitHub, if you want to see some code that doesn't work, uh, you can go there. Not sure if you want to. But what I've done is I have created this my database wizard class. And what I've done in this my database wizard class is I've updated the schema export. So you can see here that the code to create the schema export is actually really close to creating the session factory. So what you have to do to create the session factory is you have to set all of your different Hibernate properties. These would normally go in persistence.xml or hibernate config.xml. You then create this new thing called the service registry. Now, when Hibernate 5 came out, I'm not sure if it was done in 4 or 5, but it wasn't in 3, the people that were architecting the solution wanted a, a little bit more of a pluggable approach to the way Hibernate works. So, you know, they created this thing called the service registry, which consumes all of the different properties for connecting to the database and managing entities at runtime. Then they created this metadata sources object and that metadata sources object, you're supposed to put your objects into it. So, for example, I'm going to put the player class into it here. And then what you do is you uh, create the schema export class. The schema export class takes an action. You can see the action's got a few options, drop, none, create. So that tells the schema export class sort of what to do. You have this enum set here, and this enum set allows the schema export to execute against standard out, a script, or a database. That's what I want. And then you'll notice this last parameter here, that metadata that's it right there, the metadata object. And we get that by calling the build metadata method over here on the metadata sources, which we added our player class to. So that's the ins and outs of the scheme export. Now, the interesting thing is that this code is actually very, very similar to what you would do if you wanted to programmatically access the session factory. Now, again, I don't know if you people want to do that. You probably want to use JPA and the entity manager, the entity manager factory. And from the entity manager factory, you can get access to the Hibernate session. So, but I mean, if you did want to do all this programmatically, yeah, you could just comment that out and you'd create the configuration object. Um, and uh, actually, I don't even think it's needed there. Oh yeah, there's there it is. You pass it in the service registry, and you got your session factory. But anyway, so so this is how you actually create the Hibernate five schema export class and run it. Now I'm just going to run this file here. Now all this is going to do. Well, what's it going to do? Is it going to drop the database? I don't think so. Oh, you know what? It might. I'm going to take a look at that player class. So here's the player class right there. Select a thousand rows. There's only three in it. Actually, there's only two in it. The last one is null. And then I'm going to run this code. Should see the SQL coming out at the bottom there looking pretty because of this here. And then it looks like we've got an alter table, create table, insert into sequence values one. I'm not too sure. Oh, that's the sequence object. I'm going to come back here and refresh that. And there you go. The whole database has been uh, recreated. So uh, that's the code there, dropping the database first and then recreating it. So anyways, if anybody's got a copy of that old book, I got to put a new one out soon. So um, bear with me. But it, or if anybody just wanted to programmatically create the database, there's something dangerous about putting, hey, drop the database and then recreate it into 
you know, a, a persistence.xml file just in case that makes it to production and you lose your trillion records in production there. So, um, so maybe doing it programmatically and scripting it and attaching it to your tests, uh, you know, maybe there's some virtue in that. But anyways, there you go. That's uh, that's what's changed with the schema export class, and that's how you can get one to work and update and create tables for your database if you're using Hibernate 5 or newer.